Hello, I greet you, and I greet you in the presence of the Most Holy Trinity, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. One day we shall be in heaven, enjoying the presence of the Most Holy Trinity, not in faith, as we do it now, but face to face. I have called today's vid video the preventive system of St. John Bosco. As you know, St. John Bosco, so to say, invented a way of educating children and young people. And he was very successful in it. He called it the preventive system. Now, I shall go through it more or less in detail. And that's why I'm starting right from the start about Don Bosco today, because I would like to go over this preventive system uh, well and uh, do it in one video, not in two parts. So, <clears throat> on March 12, 1877, so we are in 1877, on the 12th of March. In Nice, Nice, as you know, Nice is a big, beautiful city in France. It's on the Mediterranean. And St. John Bosco there and the Salesians opened the first oratory, the first Salesian oratory in Nice, in the whole of France. In Nice, in this city was the first oratory. And uh, <clears throat> this uh, oratory, sometimes it's called even a uh, youth center, uh, it was called after St. Peter, St. Peter's Youth Center, if you want, or St. Peter's Oratory. As you know, St. John Bosco always wanted the name of a saint for every oratory that the Salesians opened, both in Italy and outside Italy. For example, if we take Turin, there are three Salesian oratories, one at the, in the Val Zone, the area of Val which is the first oratory that Tom Bosco opened. And it is dedicated to, or it's, it's called after, St. Francis de Sal, something to be expected. St. Francis de Sal uh, is the patron saint of the Salesian society. <clears throat> then, the second oratory that the Salesians opened in uh, Turin, in another area, the, it's called Porta Nuova, New Door, Porta Nuova. And that oratory is named after Saint Aloysius Gonzaga, Saint Aloysius Gonzaga, who died very, very young, in his 20s when he died, very young, he is a saint. <clears throat> And uh, then in Turin as well, Don Bosco opened the third oratory and named it after the guardian angel. Now, this one in Nice, the saint chosen was Saint Peter, probably because the area there is dedicated to Saint Peter or named somehow after Saint Peter. So they practically, uh, they found it very convenient to say, well, this is the place itself calls us, or better, uh, enlighten, enlightens us <clears throat> to name this oratory after Saint Peter. It's called, as a matter of fact, in French, uh, Oratoire Saint Pierre. Oratoire Saint Pierre. Now, so we are in 1877 on the 12th of March. Don Bosco is present there to open the first oratory on the French soil in Nice. And Don Bosco on that occasion gave an address. And he took as a topic his system of education, which he had begun to call the, edu uh, the educational preventive system. He had spoken on the occasion itself in a mixture of Italian and French, you know, the land was French. Nice is a French city. And Don Bosco was Italian, so somehow. But as you know, that Piedmont, the region of Piedmont and France are near each other. 
and so people could cross from one country to another and speak both languages practically. So somehow Don Bosco succeeded to express his ideas, uh, which was practically new to the listeners in, in both languages, in both languages. And Don Bosco said, so now from now on where's Don Bosco is speaking, not, not me. Don Bosco said, on a number of occasions I have been asked to express verbally and in writing a few thoughts concerning the so-called preventive system, which we are accustomed to use in our houses. It means in the Salesian oratories. <clears throat> Until now, I have not been able to comply with this request for lack of time. But since at the present moment we are preparing to print the regulations which now have been observed as it were by tradition, I have thought it may be fitting to present here an outline of it, which will serve as a sketch for a small work which I am preparing, if God gives me life long enough, long enough to complete it. I do this solely to help in the difficult art of educating the young, you know, those who are involved in educating children and young people know how difficult education is. It's not something easy to take for granted, but it needs a great preparation, great sacrifice, great patience, and also God's help to carry it out successfully. That's why, and Don Bosco is presented it, presenting, of course, education is not science, it's art presenting the art of educating the young. And Don Bosco, that's why he is practically speaking about this preventive system, because that would be very helpful in educating the young. Therefore, Don Bosco is speaking now. I shall speak about what the preventive system consists in, why it should be preferred, its practical application and its advantages. Through the ages there have been two systems used in the education of the young, preventive and repressive. As we know, we have the repressive system in educating uh, the young and we have the preventive system. Tom Bosco is in favor of the preventive system, but of course he created uh, although he is saying that throughout the ages there have been these systems, but he came out with very um, practical ideas and feasible ways of educating the young in this preventive system, which you can call them his, they are his ideas, and of course enlightened by God to do them as well. <clears throat> now, Don Bosco is saying the repressive approach the repressive system, it means, sometimes you can call it even the repressive method in education. The repressive approach consists in making the rules and regulations known to the students and then supervising them in order to detect transgressions, inflicting, whenever necessary, the merited punishment. Using the system the words and appearance of the superior must always be severe and somewhat menacing, and he himself must avoid all friendly relationships with his dependents. To give greater weight to his authority, the director would need to be seen, but ra rarely among this, his subjects, and generally speaking, only when it is a question of punishing or threatening a punishment. This system is easy, less demanding, and is especially useful in the army and among adult and sensible people who ought to know and remember what is according to the law and other regulations. So briefly he said something about the repressive system. Now he is speaking about his system, the preventive system. Quite otherwise is the preventive system 
Don Bosco is speaking. It is the very opposite of the repressive system. It consists in making known the rules and regulations of an institute and then supervising in such a way that the students are always under the vigilant eye of the director and the assistants who like loving fathers will converse with them, act as guides in every event, counsel them and lovingly correct them, which is as much as to say, will put the students into a situation where they cannot do wrong. This system is all based on, Don Bosco is giving three, so to say, uh, well, I mean three foundations of, of the system, preventive system. It, it is based on reason, God created with a reason, so we can use reason in educating the young, reason both by the educator and by the children and youths who are being educated, reason, religion, Christ told us, his, uh, gave us his uh, gospel, his doctrine, how to live well, and religion helps us know not only in our spiritual life, but also in our material life. And the last one is loving kindness. It means to be kind. When you educate the young, you are kind with them, but lovingly. It means not you are kind for some in personal interest, perhaps even for a wicked interest, eh? but lovingly. To wishing them their own good. That's why you are educating them. Loving kindness. So reason, religion, and loving kindness. Because of this, Don Bosco is speaking now, it excludes every violent punishment. So the, repress, the uh, preventive system excludes every violent punishment and tries to do without even mild punishments. It seems that the system should be preferred for the following reasons. And now Don Bosco is giving a number of reasons why a good educator should prefer the preventive system in educating the young to the repressive system. Number one, first, being forewarned, the pupil is not disheartened when he does something wrong, as happens when such things are reported to one in charge, nor does he get angry for being corrected or threatened with punishment, or even for actually being punished, because there is always a friendly voice for warning him and reasoning with him in such a way that it generally manages to win his friendship so that the pupil knows there must be a punishment and almost wants it. Second, the basic reason why young people get into trouble is youthful fickleness, which in a moment can forget the rules of discipline and the punishments they threaten. And for this reason, a child often commits a fault and deserves punishment, to which he had not given a thought, which he did not remember at all in the act of committing the fault, and which he certainly would have avoided had a friendly voice warned him. And Don Bosco mentions the repressive system and says that this repressive system, now not the preventive system, the repressive against which Don Bosco is speaking, the repressive system can stop a disorder, but only with difficulty can it improve offenders. One observes that young people do not get the punishments they have suffered and generally remain embittered ready even to take revenge. So Don Bosco is saying that from experience, one observes that young people do not forget the punishments they have suffered. It seems at times they pay no heed. They give that impression that they receive a punishment and nothing is happening. They give that impression they are not heeding the punishment. 
But anyone who follows them up in later life knows that the recollections of the young are dreadful and that they forget the punishments inflicted by their parents, but with great difficulty those given to them by their teachers. Episodes are known of some who in their old age have exacted an ugly revenge for certain punishments justly inflicted during their school days. On the other hand, the preventive system makes a friend of the student who in the assistant sees a benefactor. The assistant here is perhaps a person uh, in a general way, the teacher, the assistant, the director, the educator, whoever, that's why. Whoever is looking after that student sees the student sees in that person a benefactor who gives him good advice, wants to make him good, to shield him from unpleasantness, from punishment and from dishonor. A dishonor, it could be a dishonor, not when they are children, of course, when they grow old and uh, I mean when they, they grow adults, adults, not necessarily old, adults, and they can end up in, in prison for having committed a crime. So education helps them for their future life as well, not just now while they are students. It's a good preparation for life. So Don Bosco is continuing. The preventive system offers the student previous warning in a way that the educator can still speak to him in the language of the heart, whether during the time of his education or later. The educator, having won the loving respect of his student, will be able to greatly influence him, warn him, counsel him, and also correct him, even when he is employed, whether it be, it be in the civil service or in commerce. For these and many other reasons, it seems that the preventive system should prevail over the repressive. The practice of the system is all based on the words of St. Paul, who says, Love is patient, love is kind, it bears all things, hopes all things, endures all things, Love is kind and patient. It's taken from the first letter to the Corinthians, uh, chapter 13. Love puts up with all things, but hopes all things, and endures any disturbance. For this reason, Don Bosco is saying, only a Christian can successfully apply the preventive system. Reason and religion are the means, the educator, should constantly make use of, teaching them, making use of them himself, if he wishes to be obeyed and to attain his goal. For this reason, the director should be dedicated to his pupils, nor should he ever assume tasks that would take him away from his duties. On the contrary, he should be among his pupils every time they are not taken up with other legitimate tasks, unless they are duly assisted by others. The teachers, technical instructors, assistants, in other words, all those who directly or indirectly help in the education of the young, should all be of known moral rectitude, of good moral character. They should try to avoid, like the plague, every kind of morbid affection or exclusive friendship with the pupils, and they should realize that the wrongdoing of just one person can compromise an educational institute. They should operate in a way that the students are never alone. As far as possible, the assistants should precede them, 
to the place where they are required to assemble. They should remain with them until others come to assist them. They should never allow them to be idle. And Don Bosco then comes to these activities, so to say, which help a lot in their education. He says, Don Bosco, give them, give to students, eh? children, young people, give them to those you are educating. Ample liberty, freedom, to jump, to run, to make a din as much as they please. Gymnastics, music, narration of poems or declamation of poems, drama, hikes, are very effective methods for getting discipline. They favor good living and good health. One must only ensure that the plot, characters and dialogue are not unsuitable. That great friend of youth, St. Philip Neri, as you know, St. Philip Neri worked a lot with the, with the roots, youths in Rome. He used to say, do whatever you wish. For me, it is enough that you don't sin. And Don Bosco come to another suggestion. Frequent confession, frequent communion, daily mass are the pillars that ought to support an educational edifice from which one would want to keep at bay threats and violence. Never require the youngsters, this is Don Bosco's advice, who always wanted his children and young people to be in God's grace. Never require the youngsters to go to the holy sacraments. Don't force them to the sacraments, but just encourage them and offer them every opportunity to make good use of them. Then, on the occasion of retreats, novenas, homilies, religious instructions, one should highlight the beauty, greatness and holiness of that religion which proposes with such easy methods things as useful to civil society, to peace of heart, to the salvation of one soul, as are those holy sacraments. In this way, the young people will become involved spontaneously in these religious practices, gladly and fruitfully. And Don Bosco continues, exercise the strictest vigilance to prevent their being allowed in the institute where these young people and youths are already being educated, eh? prevent from having there friends, books or persons who carry on bad conversations. Of course, today he would mention other ways and other means as well. The appointment of a good doorkeeper constitutes a treasure for a house of education. Of course, you know, he's speaking about a doorkeeper because at that time, uh, also in today, at the time, I mean, today we have a doorkeeper even in all institutes, in all uh, schools and so on. Okay? He is, Don Bosco is pointing to a good doorkeeper who does not let any harmful thing enter the, the uh, education institute or whatever, uh, but harmful not only materially but also spiritually. Now Don Bosco continues, every evening, now this applies to boarders, those who, they are not day school, they go to school and then when they end, say, at 2 at 3 p.m., they go back home. These are um, boarders who um, they attend to school in that institute, but they also have, they, they sleep there, they have their meals there, their recreational time, and so on and so forth. So these are boarders. Every evening, after the usual prayers, and before the students go to bed, the director or some, someone in his place should offer a few kind words in public, giving some good advice or counsel regarding things to be done or avoided. 
and let him try to glean those events that have taken, taken place that day in the institute or outside. But his talk should never go for more than two or three minutes. This is the key to good behavior, progress and educational success. Don Bosco is giving another advice. Avoid, like the plague, the opinion of anyone who would want to postpone first Holy Communion to too old an age, when most times the devil has taken possession of the heart of a youngster with incalculable harm to his innocence. According to the discipline of the early church, it was customary to give to infants the consecrated hosts left over from the Easter communion. This helps us realize how much the church loves to see children admitted to their first holy communion in due time. Once a child can tell the difference between bread and bread and shows himself to be sufficiently instructed, pay no attention to his age and let the heavenly king come to reign in that happy soul. Catechism recommends frequent communion. Saint Philip Neri advised receiving once a week or even more frequently. The Council of Trent states clearly that it greatly wishes every faithful Christian to also receive communion each time he goes to Mass. But this communion should not only be spiritual, but in fact sacramental, so that one may gain greater benefit from this august and divine sacrifice. Someone might say that the preventive system is difficult in practice. I reply, I, St. John Bosco it means, I reply that from the point of view of the students, it turns out easier, more satisfying, more advantageous. In the case of the educator, it does include some difficult features, which however are diminished if the educator addresses the task with devotion. An educator is one devoted to the well-being of his students and for this reason ought to be ready to face every inconvenience, every fatigue in order to achieve his goal, which is the civil, moral and intellectual education of his students. Over and above the advantages set out above, Don Bosco is continuing by saying, I would also add, first, the student will have the greatest respect for the educator and will go on recalling with pleasure the orientation he was given, always considering his teachers and the other superiors as fathers and brothers. Wherever they go, the students are generally the consolation of their families, useful citizens and good Christians. Second, whatever might be the character, attitude and moral state of the a pupil at the time he is enrolled, his parents can be secure in the knowledge that their son will not deteriorate and one may confidently assert that one will achieve some improvement. Indeed, certain youngsters who for a long time were the scourge of their parents and were even refused entry in houses of correction, when cared for according to these principles, change their attitude, their character, they set themselves to live, to live a decent life and now feel honorable places in society, thus becoming the support of their families and a credit to the area they live in. Pupils, there now, pupils having unfortunate habits, who perchance should gain entry into an institute, will not be able to harm their fellows, nor will good boys be harmed by them, because there will be neither time, place or opportunity 
insofar as the assistant, whom we presume to be present, would probably put things right. Now, Don Bosco passes on to say something about punishments. And he says, Don Bosco, what criteria should one observe when inflicting punishment? Where possible, one should not make use of punishments, but when necessity demands repression, one should bear in mind the following. First, the educator at work among his pupils should make himself loved if he wishes to be respected. In this case, the omission of an act of goodwill is a punishment, but a punishment that acts as a challenge, encourages and never disheartens. Second, with the young, what is used as a punishment becomes a punishment. One can observe that a less than loving look, less than loving look, so the noun look is qualified by the phrase less than loving, is for some worse than being struck. Praise when something is well done and blame where there is negligence are already reward and punishment. All right, something to be expected. You praise one who has done something good and you of course correct one who has done something wrong. Except in very rare cases, corrections Don Bosco speaking, corrections, punishments should never be given in public, but privately. Apart from companions, and one should use the greatest prudence and patience to have the student understand his fault through reason and religion. To strike one in any way, to make one kneel in a painful position, to pull anyone's ears and similar punishments should be absolutely avoided because they are forbidden by law and greatly irritate the young and degrade, degrade the educator. The rector should make the rules well known along with the rewards and punishments set down in the disciplinary policy so that no pupil might be able to excuse himself by saying he did not know what was commanded or forbidden. If in our houses, Don Bosco is ending the last paragraph here, if in our houses, this oratories, whatever, this system, the preventive system, is put into practice, I believe that we will be able to achieve excellent results without resorting either to corporal punishment nor to other violent punishments. See what Don Bosco is saying. For the, for the past 40 years, 40 years, for the past 40 years during which I have dealt with the young, I do not remember ever having used any kind of punishment and with God's help, I have always got not only what was necessary, but even had my wishes met, and that from those same young people for whom every hope of a good outcome seemed in vain. This is Don Bosco. Whoever has any difficulty about what I said can ask me. I always answer, as you know, your questions as clearly as possible and according to your needs. You can also share your opinion. We can learn much from each other. You can also post, post a prayer if you want, even one invented by ourselves. Everyone knows how to post the message on this video or on any other video of mine. You who are listening and me, one day in heaven together shall be, always by the power of God's grace.